Oh, Peachy, I want to play a game. The phone rang noisily downstairs. Generally, there were no calls for me, so I never really answered the phone much. But since my parents weren't here, I had no choice. I squirmed off the bed and went downstairs. Hello, this is Mabara Residence. Keiichi, this is Mom. I intuitively had a bad feeling about this. It was clear I thought she was going to ask me to go out and buy some things. <laughs> What's your favorite scary movie? Give me a second, let me just pour more of my drink. Alright, so I took the initiative. What? I don't mind having instant noodles for dinner. There's still a lot of them. The other day we went out as family and bought a whole case of cup noodles. I wanted to get a bunch of different kinds actually, but they refused since the individual packs were expensive. So instead I got a whole case of the mega-sized pork bone and ginger flavored ones I like. But my parents don't like strong flavors and didn't touch any of them. So the cupboards were still full of them. Your parents are weird. So you see, there really isn't a need to go shopping, right? Keiichi, I'm not asking you to go shopping. Both mommy and daddy have to go to Tokyo right now because of work. Huh? Right now? That was really... abrupt. No, we're already here. We left this afternoon. It's quite a distance to Tokyo from Hinamiyazawa. Gunning it at full speed down the highway would still take six hours. Dad has a license, but since he doesn't like the highway, they likely took the train. It would have taken longer. I'm thinking you... I'm thinking you might understand since you heard us speaking last night, but it has to do with Daddy's contract. Right now, things aren't going so smoothly. Now that she mentioned it, I did remember that they talked all that time about how his job prospects weren't looking so good. Daddy is really sensitive about things like this, so if we leave things as they are, it will affect his work. Part of my father's particular fragile artistic personality, his emotions changed as easily as the fall sky. You could also say that he couldn't take criticism. Oh good, he's like every person on the internet. Well, I say that, but most of the time anyone uses the you just can't take criticism excuse is usually so they can just bash someone and not actually give criticism. Although there generally are people who just can't take actual criticism. <laughs> Speaks more of their mindset than the other people. <laughs> Daddy's mistress has fucked us over, KG. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, oh yeah. But something like that can be done over the phone. <laughs> Mommy wanted to tap that. KG, this is your father's job, so can you support him a bit, please? Anyway, it's just faster to talk about it in person, so there wouldn't be any misunderstandings. As their son, there was nothing more I could say once they started talking about work. So we'll be back tomorrow night. Oh, great. I'm here alone for an entire day with a village that wants to murder me. What could... What could possibly go wrong? Keiichi, will you be fine on your own? Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! It's not like I'll die or anything. Oh, wait. Shit. <laughs> Keishi, you shouldn't speak so lightly of dying. After all, your friends are trying to murder you. That's true, they are. Wait, what? <laughs> if there's something troubling you, just talk to us. I believe Mommy will be able to help out. <laughs> Alright, bad choice of words, Keishi. By the way, is it just me? Or does this sound really off when, like, KG is clearly, like, he's either supposed to be 16 or 17, but his parents still call, still say mommy and daddy? I don't know. That's really weird to me. Yeah. 
Yesterday, I did bring up if I died rather abruptly, so I suppose they were a little worried. Somewhere between 14 and 17. Yeah, it's still... By, by the time you're a teenager, that's still weird. <laughs> by the way, I let Raina and me on some spare keys. Remember to appreciate your friends. <laughs> Probably, but it's still weird. Anyways, but really, I was more depressed by the fact that nothing would be solved by telling them. But I didn't plan on dying. At least not while I still knew nothing. I would never allow it. Once I figure out the truth, then, and only then, do they have my permission to kill me. Where's my phone? Oh, there it is. I'm stupid. <laughs> Sorry, I want to have my phone nearby in case someone texts me or something. Also, to keep track of the clock so I can diabetes the dog. It's not anytime soon, but I still want to keep track of it. Anyways, I won't die. I won't. I'll survive even if I have to gnaw my leg off. Yeah. See you then. Tomorrow morning, make sure to wake up and eat your breakfast. And don't forget to take a bath and brush your teeth. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, see you. The call ended like that. Sometimes my parents went off to Tokyo for business meetings, but Tokyo was far away. They normally did things by phone. The times they did go were normally planned out in advance. It never happened this suddenly. I couldn't say that those circumstances didn't feel strange, or rather, unnatural, or forced for the plot. Anyway, I only need to recognize the reality of the situation. That tonight, I was the only one in the house. That when my parents come back from work, I'd be gone. Missing. Vanished. Looking back on the series of events of the previous five years involving Oyashiro Sama's curse, it, would seem that it wouldn't seem that strange at all. Come to think of it, it was getting pretty late. Keiichi, get the flamer. The heavy flamer. I didn't think it was a good I didn't think it was good that only that the only light on in the whole house was from my room on the second floor. It was the same as broadcasting to the enemy that my parents were gone and this was their chance. First I ran into the living room, flicked on the lights, turned the TV on to a reassuring volume. Next was the study. I similar I similarly turned on the lights and some music. With this from the outside it would look like my parents were here. Once again, I went through the house, checking to see if there was anything left unlocked. When I saw the veranda and the laundry still hanging out there, I went pale. That would have made it too obvious. I needed to take it down. I snatched down the laundry haphazardly and erased all traces that my mother wasn't there. It should be fine now. Ah, the garbage. They hadn't gone all the way to Tokyo by car, but they had gone up to Okinomiya Station. The garbage was empty, wide open, and in plain sight. That was not good. I panicked and rushed out the back to close the normally open garage uh, garage door. Oh, garage? I think I've been saying garbage. <laughs> Oops. Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. That makes a lot more sense now. It should be fine now. I need to get the papers. <laughs> the garage, not garbage. Look, some people drive their car out of their garbage, okay? Look. I live a sheltered, poor life. <laughs> when your car is made out of trash, you <laughs> the garbage is an entirely separate issue. <laughs> when your car is made out of trash, you sacrifices need to be made. Anyways, mom always got the paper. Since they left in the afternoon, the evening paper was still out there. My premonition was correct. I pulled out everything from the mailbox and dropped it in the entryway. With this, for sure this time, it should be fine. Come to think of it, leaving the cupboard busted like that from my little freakout was kind of bad. I'll just say I tripped and fell, and the bat I was holding smashed into it. 
Even so, just leaving it in current state wasn't good. I should clean it up a little before mom get before mom got back and scolded me. I remember that there was a broom and dustpan in the closet. As I was going to get them, the phone rang once again. Hello, KG. What's your favorite scary movie? Hello, Cage Coon. Yeah. Oh, is this KG Coon? Is your mother around? Oh no! Don't answer this question. Uh, she isn't here at the moment. You idiot, Keiichi Mabara. Don't reveal that your parents are gone. You can follow up still. Calm down and take care of it. <laughs> Keiichi, your parents are dead. I don't know who you are, but I will find you, and I will kill you. God, how many movie? How many? How many telephone movie scenes can we reference? Let's keep going. I think she'll be back soon. That wasn't a good response either. Now they might now they might say they'll call again or to tell her to call them when she comes back. Then that's fine. It wasn't anything important. Well then, sorry for the bother. The scenario I feared didn't play out, eliciting a sigh of relief. That call was fortunate in more ways than one. I'd have to deal I'd have to deal with any telephone calls coming in from my parents tonight. I was somehow able to deal with the phone call just now, but I couldn't continue to rely on such poor improv improv skills. I needed to make up a good story to explain that my parents were home but couldn't answer the phone at the moment. They were making tempura and couldn't step away right now. That nah, wasn't good enough. They were sick and went to bed because they weren't feeling well. Was that going to be safe enough? I was thinking about it on the way back to my room when the phone rang once again. It was like they were calling because they knew I was going to lie. I didn't want to pick up. <laughs> Connection terminated. See, I didn't want to pick up, but I knew I had to. They'd suspect my parents weren't here. I should have just taken the phone off the hook under the pretense that I didn't real that I didn't realize that it was. But since the phone rang, I had to pick it up. I prepared myself and lifted up the receiver. Hello? I stopped announcing this was Mabra residence. I had no reason to be kind of some, to be kind of kind to someone I didn't know the identity of. But unlike my uncouth voice, the person on the other side sounded goofy and lighthearted. Oh, good you. Hello. My apologies for calling so late. This is Oishi from Okonomiya Bookstore. Oishi-san. Is that you, Mabra-san? Good evening. Good to hear you are doing well. Oh, wait just a moment, please. I grabbed the portable handset and rushed up to my room with it. It was the same no matter where I was since there was no one else home, but I wanted to be in a spot that just felt a bit safer when speaking on the phone with Oishi-san. Sorry for the wait. Kept you waiting, huh? How are things? Anything changed since then? <laughs> Since then? Uh When was that exactly? There was something about the brazen way he talked that rubbed me the wrong way. The last time I spoke with Oishi-san was two days ago. The day I stayed home from school. I met Oishi-san on the way back from the hospital and we headed into town for lunch and had a talk. Then after that, Reina and Mion came to check up on me. Whenever I spoke with Oishi-san, they always knew about it. It was like that since the first time I met him. Today's phone call may well be found out by them as well. They're tapping your phone line. <laughs> Surveillance cameras? Hello? Can you hear me, Mabara-san? Huh? Uh, sorry. Um, what did you say? I asked if anything's changed since last time. There, hasn't, there wasn't an answer, so I got a bit worried. The call is coming from inside the house. I don't know why. I always think the Saw theme whenever I think, like, big, transcending, like, revelation in a horror movie for some reason. I don't know. Uh, um, not really. The words stopped in my throat. There was a ton of stuff that happened. All of it baffling. What should I talk about? I didn't understand any of it, but I should try asking. If I didn't ask now, I may never have another chance. 
And that, this night when my parents weren't home, I had no guarantees I would make it through the night safely after all. Well, Oishi-san, it seems that someone is after me. Really? It could all just be a coincidence, but that day I missed school when I was sick. The two of them came to check up on me. Which two? Reina and Mion. They started asking about how I had lunch with you. What next? They left me with some mochi when they came to visit, but there was a needle inside. Fortunately, I somehow didn't swallow it. I wonder, could that have just been a threat? About the needle. Um, it was just one of those common sewing needles you see all the time. There was a hole to thread string through. Not that, Mabara-san. The needle itself. That's evidence. It could be used as proof that they threatened you. Where is the needle? Th that's right. That's it. I dropped the receiver and rushed downstairs. When I tossed the mochi, I... I had overlooked it out of terror, but that needle was a valuable piece of evidence. Let's see, I threw the mochi and the needle at the wall together. If it was right there, then I'd been on the living room wall. But my prudent mother had cleaned that living room wall, and there was not a trace of the mochi left on it. Of course. Thanks, Mom! God! Ugh! Cleaning up the evidence that could prove my friends are trying to kill me. Could it be that it dropped in the gap between the wall and the carpet? I frantically searched by running my palm along the carpet, but nothing turned up. I tried moving around the sofa and desk, pulling up the carpet, then flapping it around. But I couldn't find the needle. Did my mom clean up everything without noticing it? It was just two days ago. I didn't know what day they collected the burnable trash. But it may still be in the trash bin in the kitchen. I rushed into the kitchen, opened up the lid of the pail, and poured out the contents. But even at a glance, I could tell that it would be incredibly difficult to find the needle in this pile of trash. Dare I say, a needle in a haystack. I was looking for a needle in a trash stack. Eh, close enough. I know. I'll try running my hand through it. It was a bit gross, but I was looking for a needle. If I felt a small prick, I'll be able to find it. It was a pretty tactless method, but it was the quickest. I held my breath and started striking the pile of trash with my hand. Filth flew out. There was nothing more disgusting than this. But it was not the time to be concerned about such details. I continued on for a while, but nothing turned up. I wanted to search more thoroughly, but I was still on the phone. I shouldn't keep Oishi-san waiting for too long. Later, when Mom got back, I'd have to ask her if there was a needle. I hastily began scribbling on the notepad affixed to the refrigerator with a magnet. Was there a needle? I scrawled the words with a red pen. I then dashed back up the stairs where I had been keeping Oishi-san waiting for far too long. Hello? How did it go? I couldn't find it. I was really overwhelmed when it happened and... I see. It would be great if you could find it. Keep it safe. That's right. The needle wasn't the only incident. I had to tell him about this morning with the hit and run. Also, Oishi-san, that isn't all. Actually, this morning. That van was definitely aiming for me. I could say that without question due to the circumstances at that time. Did you see the license plate? I can search for it from here. Damn. At the time, I just flipped out yelling at him, but I didn't look at the plate. What failures on my part with the needle and the plate number? I was so focused just protecting myself that I let some of the most important details slip out of my grasp. I punched my pillow, annoyed at how worthless I was. I'm sorry. I don't know much more than it was a white van. Nothing to fret about, Mabra-san. Anyone would be shaken up after being hit. I guess all of this really isn't a coincidence, is it? Oishi-san started to hem and haw over on the other end. I could imagine him folding his arms. Also, Reina is acting strange. How so? What Reina said on the way home today, asking why it was so much like Satoshi-kun. Now I could say it with confidence, that Reina knew what happened to Satoshi. Sa Sato? Yeah. She knew that there was more to it than him just simply disappearing. Reina knows. She knows something regarding what happened to Satoshi, the kid who was demoned away last year. 
What would that be exactly? Rena said I was the same as Satoshi. She said something to the effect that the way things are going, I'll end up the same fate as Satoshi. Fate, you say? Exactly what kind of fate did she say would befall you? Transferring out, she said. Transferring out? Rena said Satoshi transferred out. So, given how things are going with me, I'll transfer out too. Oishi san let out a stern sigh and then grumbled loudly. Mabra san. That was probably some sort of threat. Or maybe some type of warning. I thought so too. At that point, I started to think. Would it be prudent to sum up everything that had happened up until now as the machinations of some human perpetrator? Other than the theory of it being Reina and the others, I was left with oyashiro samas curse actually existing as the only explanation. Of course, I couldn't tell that to Oishi-san. Except, Reina's strange behavior could be proof of either scenarios. Either it was oyashiro samas curse being real, or everything being part of a conspiracy committed by all of the villagers. Reina was involved. Reina had to know something. Reina was suspicious. What exactly was Reina? I couldn't help but think she was somehow involved with the prior, prior strings, string of mysterious deaths. I seem to recall that Oishi-san had admitted that he had dug into Reina's past a little. He was probably just downplaying it when he said a little, meaning he had actually dug pretty deep, most likely. I wanted to hear about Reina. I wanted to know what happened at her previous school, among other things that were still unknown to me. If Reyna was somebody I should suspect, no, fuck me, I can't read it. What? No, not that. I wanted to know the truth. Tonight I was alone in this huge house. Even though I said I couldn't count on them, I had lost the security I felt I had just by my parents being around. It wasn't like this house was some sort of fortress or castle. If a malicious person decided to use brute force, they'd easily gain entry. There were uh, no other residents close to the Mabara residence. No one would be able to hear anything, no matter how loud it was. Uh, let's see. I'd never felt uh, as much resentment towards my father's artistic temperament and the fact that he had this house built in such a remote location as I did right now. I wondered if I'd still be here by tomorrow morning. So I had to ask, right now, because I had no idea when the next chance would come. Oishi-san, I have something I wanted to ask about. Please don't keep anything from me. Sure, ask away. Even though he was too far away on the other side of the or uh, on the other end of the line, this was the most reliable he had ever felt. I wanted to ask about Reina, about what happened at her previous school. Actually, regarding Reina's, I noticed a sound that had been going on for a while now. As I was so focused on the call, I hadn't paid attention to it at first, but I finally realized it was the doorbell. The time was seven o'clock. It was past the time the postman would be making a delivery, past any sensible time for a neighbor to be visiting. I considered just acting like nobody was home, but that wouldn't be good. That would ruin all the work I put into making it look like my parents were home. I need to answer the door. Hello? mabara san Sorry, someone seems to be at the door. I'm going to go see who it is. A guest. I see. My apologies. Should we end this phone call now? That would be a problem. No, I'll be back in a second. Do you mind if I just leave the phone on? It's fine. I don't mind. I dropped the handset on my bed and dashed down to the door. I needed to make up a good excuse to get them to leave. I had a hunch it was the lady who called right before Oishi-san did. In which case, it would be one of the neighbors who's friends with my mom. Let's just say mom isn't feeling well and went to bed early. That would be the easiest option. It'd be hard for her to ask me to wake my mom up if she's not feeling well. The bell continued to ring at regular intervals. If someone didn't answer after you rang the bell so much, you'd normally give up and go home, wouldn't you? Without removing the chain, I opened the door slightly and peered out at the visitor. 
A chill ran down my spine. I knew it. Somewhere deep inside, I had prepared for this moment. I had tried to escape by imagining it was the easiest person to deal with, one of my mom's friends. Good evening. Reyna? There shouldn't be any reason for Reyna to come over at this hour. The timing also made me feel uneasy. Because it was just as I was about to ask Oishi-san about Reyna. I wish I could have chalked this up to mere coincidence. But those unsettling words from Mion several days ago echoed back to me. There's nothing this old man doesn't know. Uh, are you alone, Reyna? Yeah. Seems that Mion wasn't with her. But that didn't change the situation at all. Why did you come here? Hey, Keiji-kun? I'd like you to open the door so we can talk. Can I come inside, I wonder? I wonder? It was true that speaking through a chain door wasn't the right way to talk to a classmate. But... In my house, the chain has to be on at night. Don't worry about it. Then it can't be helped, I guess. Reyna looked at the ground sadly. But she kept smiling, at least, and her effort to keep that smile up was quite pitiful. Even though she was tugging at my heartstrings, I didn't lower my guard. As long as I stayed like this, even if it made my heart ache, my life wasn't in danger. What I really feared, more than possibility that the hoodlums would assault me if I removed the chain, was trusting Reyna enough to remove the chain and having my friendship betrayed. As long as the chain was unlatched, even if it made my heart, uh, wasn't unlatched, even if it made my heart ache, I wouldn't have to deal with being betrayed by Reyna. Since it didn't seem like I'd remove the chain from her silent urging, she appeared to give up and trying to, on trying to get into the entranceway. Um, have you eaten, Keiji-kun? No, I haven't eaten. Since my mom wasn't here, dinner wouldn't be ready, no matter how long I waited. I laid down when I got home. I was woken up by the phone and didn't have a chance to eat since I used up all the time talking. I was going to have cup noodles in any case. I could just eat one whenever I wanted to. No, not yet. What about it? You've been good. Look here. I brought a bunch of dishes. Reyna held out a stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. If I could use your kitchen, I can heat up the miso soup and other stuff. It's fine. You don't need to do that. But, but there's a lot of tofu and vegetables in it. Does Keiji Kun not like that type of stuff, I wonder? I wonder? There's no way I wouldn't like that. I love miso soup with lots of ingredients. White radish, carrots, burdock root, and potatoes. Dense and fibrous root vegetables. Yeah, that miso soup looks incredible. I also brought rice, so if you microwave it, it'll be ready to eat in no time. Without a doubt, rice needs miso soup. Stuffing rice down your gullet, sipping miso soup in between ravenous bites. Oh yes, how wonderful it is to be born Japanese. Also, I made some more pickles. I made sansai pickles this time. Before I had moved here to Hinamiyazawa, I scuffed at the mountain vegetables called sansai. But I was captivated by their charm the first time I tried them. Such a deep yet light flavor. Those so-called supermarket vegetables taste rough and overpowering in comparison. If you had to describe them, then they were vegetables for the uninitiated. To become an expert, such as myself, you had to you first had to partake of Sansai. It was common knowledge around here that the Ryugu family's traditional pickles were wonder wonderfully del delicious. Fuck me, I can't words. No matter what kind of pickles they were, they'd go well with that fluffy white rice. And also, and also. But wait, there's more! So delicious. It just seems so delicious. Farewell to my unhealthy self who said he'd make do with cup noodles. Reyna appeared to be in good spirits, and she was offering such a delicious-sounding dinner. 
The stress evaporated from my gut and hunger reared its voracious head. At the same time, my wariness of Reyna suddenly dwindled. Don't do it, bro. It's a trap! Reyna did say she was alone. It shouldn't be a problem letting her inside. Don't do it. Though the possibility that it was laced with poison still hadn't ruled out. At that moment, a cold chill ran down my spine once again. I couldn't understand why such a sensation had occurred just then, but the voice inside me was sounding the alarm. 